Hello, everybody. I am Derek Jameson, and uh, this is my portrait series where I feature amazing people doing incredible things for others in their community, in their families, and for the world. And um, this is Virginia Co. and she is a psych K facilitator and a belief alchemist. Now, there are different healing modalities that are out in the world, and I think this one is such a cool one because it gets to the core of what's going on with people. And that's why I have Virginia on today to be able to talk about what Psych-K is, um, to educate us a little bit about that, um, as, as well as what a belief alchemist is. That sounds, uh, sounds sexy, and I'm really into it. So <laughs> I'm going to let you take it away and let you tell me and us what Psych-K is and how you do it and all this stuff. So take it away. Okay. Well, first, let's address belief alchemist. It's just something I made up. <laughs> just because what I do is basically change your belief system. And I do that through a couple different things. Psyche is the main modality that I use and it found me. And I can tell you a little bit more about that. Um, on April Fool's day of last year, which is a great day to get a cancer diagnosis, I was diagnosed with stage two melanoma and that started me on this whole thought process. Like I was never going to identify with being a cancer patient. I just couldn't. Every time I would sit in one of those waiting rooms and you look around, that wasn't who I was. And so um, I really started concentrating on what my thought pattern was. And I was diagnosed on the first and cleared on the 30th. And after all of that, I started having this, um, it was like a field of dreams moment, build it and they will come. But that thought that was coming through was belief as a healing modality. And it would not shut up. It was constant over and over again. And I didn't know what that meant. I worked a corporate job. I was normal. I still am normal. But now I've got a little <laughs> more um, of an arsenal behind me. After going through this, I learned um, to do some research. And I started researching what the mind has to do with healing. And I found great teachers like Bruce Lipton, Joe Dispenza. And it was through a Bruce Lipton video that I found Psyche. Mm -hmm. And it, it wouldn't leave me alone. Like I knew that, um, that I had to figure out what it was. And I took classes and became a facilitator. And then after that, I became an advanced facilitator. And now I can use it to help people actually reprogram their limiting beliefs and not only heal, because it does help with that, facilitating that, but it also helps with interpersonal stuff. You know, those limiting beliefs that keep you from excelling at your job or performing in sports or doing other things. This can actually help reprogram all of those negative beliefs or limiting beliefs. That's amazing. First of all, it's an amazing story to, to share about how you completely shifted your life from what you were thinking it was or created it to be and almost going through an awakening process through seeing what was really important to you um, and then being met with the opportunity to fulfill what sounds like your, your mission or something you were ultimately supposed to do. Um, and that's incredible. And that's a really lovely story. And I am glad, thank you for sharing that with me and the people that are going to watch this because uh, it's pretty, it's pretty incredible. So with, with that, with physical healing, how does it, uh, like what's an example of a physical healing that it does or that you've done or, and how it, how it works? Um, physical healing can go, you know, when I got cancer, I could have played that victim card and kind of been like, oh, woe is me. But instead, you have to flip it around and you have to say things that don't feel true in the moment. And that was, I am healthy. My body heals rapidly and quickly. You have to reprogram your mind mm -hmm. because it's your subconscious mind that is kind of steering the ship. And if your subconscious mind is sabotaging you and saying, no, I don't believe that, that's where you run into trouble and you can't heal. So people who succumb to sickness sometimes they sabotage themselves. So we want to make sure that your conscious mind is in alignment with your conscious mind. 
Yeah. And that sounds like to keep things in balance, to make sure that it's like working with coherence with each other and to be in the flow uh, rather than in resistance of those things. Right. Um, so when it comes to, what do you think is one of the hardest belief systems, or do you find something to be one of the hardest belief systems for people to break away from that they've been programmed with, or is there something that stands out to you? Um, I find that a lot of people don't believe that they're worthy mm. of certain things or they deserve certain things. And so that is normally my go-to if they are, we use muscle testing to find out what the subconscious is belief is. Um, and during muscle testing, it'll test either weaker or strong. And that is sometimes my, my go-to is I am worthy of love. I am worthy of whatever these basic beliefs are. And everybody thinks, oh, I'm worthy. But if you test weak, your subconscious does not believe that you're worthy. And that's a program that you got as a child. That's somebody else's program. So we can actually delete that program and upload, I am worthy of love. I am worthy of abundance. I am worthy of health and healing. Yes, I, I love that. So, like I could feel that just by you saying it. And I'm sure the people that are watching can also be like, Yes, yes, because there's, I, I honestly believe that we all have the programs of different levels and different things about self-worth that we at one point started agreeing to. We started agreeing with those other things about our own self-worth. We gave that away, and it's almost like we had to give it away in order to really come back into a place of self-love and self-empowerment, and you have, to, you have to get rid of it to appreciate it almost. Um, and so I, I just, I love that. I love that. I love this so much. I'm so interested. Um, um, so when it comes to, is, I mean, is that something that you particularly had some problems with? And then, so oh, you yeah. can think from personal experience that like how this can really affect other people's lives by reprogramming the mind, the subconscious mind. Right. And, a lot of people, you know, affirmations are great, but you're dealing with the conscious mind. So the conscious mind runs at a 40 bit processor. Your subconscious is running at a 40 million bit processor. So if your subconscious belief is the stronger belief, that's the one that's going to be carried out all the time. So imagine driving with one foot on the gas and one foot on the brake. It, it doesn't work. So you have to get them on the same page and you have to reprogram that subconscious belief to align with the conscious belief and really get po people into that positive mindset. Yeah. Wow. Um, there, I mean, I'm sure people listening right now are like, oh my gosh, I have, I have certain belief systems that aren't ones that they just consciously actively do or choose. It's the subconscious programs that people don't realize are still on a loop that keep replaying and it's just because it's so normal that they accept it as normal rather than say, rather than stepping back and questioning the experience and saying, Hey, I think that, you know, I, that actually doesn't feel good to me. I don't know why I keep agreeing to that. And that's how people keep seeing cycles and cycles and cycles until they break it. It sounds like psych K would break those cycles, but not only break it, but, help you to understand what cycles you are replaying or looping through yep. in order to heal from it and integrate it. So that's mm -hmm. so incredible. I love that. Um, is there a certain way that, you, that it's done or is there a process of Psych K that you go through? Like one session is like this, one session is like this, or is it by the I, moment? I do it intuitively with each individual because everybody, um, I really want them to go through a process of self-discovery because when you discover things on your own, instead of somebody saying, what I think you need is, I think you have some ownership, some skin in the game and really take a part in this process. So I think self-discovery of what your limiting beliefs really are becomes an eye-opening moment and an even greater opportunity to learn more about yourself and the way you operate and what you're willing and not willing to carry out anymore. Yeah. Now, some people don't know what muscle testing is. I do know what muscle testing is, but just for those that heard it, they're like, what's muscle testing? Yeah. 
What is muscle guns. testing and how, <laughs> how does it help us to determine those like subconscious beliefs that we might be replaying? So there's several ways to muscle test. Um, and it is the body's lie detector. Your subconscious mind is your lie detector. You cannot fake it. So when I do, there's several ways to, to muscle test. So I won't go into that, but I will say that even the basic, your arm out and I press down, you can try to hold that arm as tight as possible. But if you tell a lie to yourself, your subconscious says, I don't believe that, and your arm will drop. Yeah. So that's what muscle testing is. And that's how I determine, oof, that was a lie. It's kind of like Maury Povich. That was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Maury Povich. <laughs> Um, you know, what I do, uh, just to give an example of muscle testing for the people that are listening, and I've told other people how to do this too, is like, I said, let's say you're at a supplement store and you have two proteins and you know, that could be very chemical or it could not. And you're like, what if this, is it going to make me feel bad or what? And I've said that I've taken literally protein to my body and I'll say, is this good for me? And if I fall <laughs> forward, it's a yes. But if I start going backward, it's a no. And it's funny because I'll test that out with different items in my house. And I'm like, ooh, let's see what I can muscle test. Is this good for me? Yes or no? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't, I don't yep. know if I want to know it. You can totally do it with stuff like that. And I sway. That's how I like to test. Um, I teach people to sway because then they get to feel it in their body. And it's not me. It's you. That's your body reacting to that question and that belief. So right. it's really interesting. I'm glad you brought that up. Oh, I love, I love it so much because it's such a thing where people are sitting there in a place where they're like, I don't know what to do. And it's like, well, you actually really, yeah. really know what to do, but you're not trusting it and you don't want to fully see that. So if you go into a muscle testing exercise with yourself, I usually would like hold my hands to my heart. I breathe in so I'm in a very high resonance space. And then I'll say, okay, is this good for me or should I, should I do this? Because ultimately the answer is coming from me. I'm just, it's giving me just kind of a literal push in, the, <laughs> in one direction yeah. or the other. So I love yeah. that you brought that up and muscle testing is definitely something you should look, um, research and look up if you want to find more information about that. But it's true, she's right. Your body really does know and your subconscious will answer that for you if you're trying to lie to it. So you might yeah. as well just get over it. <laughs> might yeah. as well face it in the first place. Mm -hmm. So so very cool. Um, are there certain other exp like other modes or healing things that you're interested in or that you incorporate with your healing modality? Um, I do a little bit of energetic emotional release. It's similar to um, the emotion code, if anybody knows what that is. And I don't, you know, I feel like I'm so new to everything because a year ago, if you would have said that I was going to quit my corporate job and start helping people heal, I would have said that you were crazy <laughs> <laughs> and whatever. But now I feel like you get little snippets. There, it's one step after another and you learn different things. And so the emotional release was just, I was flipping through YouTube, watched a video and I said, oh, I think I can do that. And sure enough, I tapped in and I could do it. And I thought this could help so many other people. So it's just finding those modalities and putting them into practice in a method of service to others. So what is emotional release? So like, what is the emotion code if people wanted to see what that was? All right, there's some YouTube's, YouTube videos from, um, I wanna say it's Dr. Nelson. And he, um, he came up with this method. It was a download, essentially. And what it is, is if you have trauma, if you have an experience that causes a severe emotion that you don't know how to process, it can get trapped in your body. It can cause you pain, it can cause you discomfort, it can just call you, cause you emotional upset yeah. and you can't quite figure out why you can muscle test and figure out if i'm having anxiety today is, is there a trapped emotion that is causing that that anxiety and i can release that and anyone can this is the beauty of these healing modalities is that anyone can learn it yeah um and it's interesting that you bring that up and that's a very good point for people that are watching is that if you have a trapped emotion within your body, 
and you're putting it in a specific area and you're not aware of it and yet you don't heal those aspects of what that that whole experience is about it can manifest into a physical illness or ailment 100%. 100%. and i've actually had with my uh, qhht regressions i've worked with people who have stored physical ail stored emotion in their body and that in turn it became a physical ailment mm -hmm. um where we had to where i had to they had to be able to see that they had created that within the body and that because if we are aware that we create that and it's something that we stored we can also offload it and emotionally release it which will allow us to be in health and full 100% and integrate the experience so i love it it's like i do it this way and then that way the emotion code is about emotional release in that way there's so many different ways that people can be able to um get at the same thing it just cuz everyone's so different so it's like what calls to you what is calling to you um just like all like site k and emotional code and emotional yeah. release called to you and me it's past life regression and doing the coaching that I do so i think it's that is so incredible there's so many facets to what that you can what you can do and provide now you can use that stuff type for animals as well correct and you can i have um i've worked on a couple animals i've done some shelter work i've done things that um i didn't even know was possible <laughs> that it really is a unique gift to be able to unburden another creature that has had trauma that you have no idea what that trauma is. You can just tap in and release it. Yeah. Wow. That, and that's so you can do this, the kind of work that you're doing, you can do it remotely. Yes. So if people contacted you after watching this and, and wanted to know more about it, they could just go to your website and then you could do it over Absolutely. FaceTime or... Yep. Cool. I can do it over the phone. I can do it FaceTime. I can do it like if it's for a pet, I can just go ahead and do it for the pet. Yeah, I can. I can do it all, Derek. You, can, <laughs> you are a belief alchemist. I'm pretty sure you can do it all. <laughs> and just a reminder for those of you that have just signed on. This is Virginia Co, who is a psych K facilitator and a belief alchemist, as I just stated. <laughs> and um, she helps people reform the patterns that are that their belief systems that have been programmed throughout their life help offload those so that it can create emotional healing and physical healing. Uh, and so we're just talking today to learn more about what Psych Kate is, so that people that are listening will be able to um, check it out, check her website out, which is thiscoexistence.com thiscoexistence.com and um, I'll be posting this and then putting that information in it as well. Um, what is your daily spiritual practice for like mind, body, spirit balance? Um, when I wake up in the morning, I make sure to connect first thing when I'm not really awake <laughs> and ask, you know, if there's any information that I need to know about the day. And again, a year ago, I would have thought you were nuts for even suggesting that I do this, but it's <laughs> the best thing because you will be shocked at what comes through and it's just a thought. And you're like, oh yeah, I should do that today. I could do that today. What will that lead to? And you never know what it's gonna lead to, but there's little breadcrumbs that lead you to your next cool thing. So I do that in the morning. Um, I make sure that I not only eat well, self-care is so important. Again, I would have never thought that it was important to the point that it, it is, it has really shifted things for me. When you put yourself first, you give others the best part of you because there is energy, there's flow, there's health, there's vitality. You have to put yourself first if you're gonna give others around you the best version of yourself. It's so, so interesting really that you- I concentrate on that. <laughs> it's so amazing. I literally, before we got on, my whole video I'm about to post today is literally on that subject about oh, making perfect. sure that the best thing that you can do for others is you doing the best for you because yep. it starts there and more people are more affected in a positive way by you being positive because of the energy field and the thoughts that you send out than just mm -hmm. if you were sad and just depleted you know yep. it really starts from that so it's so funny that you that you brought that up um it is uh, you said can you say the website again this coexistence.com 
Yes. So Rachel, the one that you typed out and that's it. Yeah, there's a few people that wanted to see what your website was. Um, <laughs> is there, I, I love that. I love your practices. I, isn't it funny that you have to get into that uncomfortable space in order to see what is waiting for you on the other yes. side of the unknown, the uncertain. And that's literally what our entire experience right now is that we're moving through is moving through the uncertain to see what you're capable of doing and see how and see what you see what your true power is and that's what everybody is going to come out of this with is a true sense of authentic power a deeper sense of love a deeper sense of what needs to be healed and and i believe they're going to um you know, be looking out for more direction with this and psych K and the emotional code really, I think, benefit this mm -hmm. process. It's really, you know, I joke with people all the time. It, I didn't choose this. <laughs> it found me and I've been pushed and who am I to say, no, I'm not going to do that because it is crystal clear that this is exactly what I should be doing to help others, you know, to create that safe space and to see them excel because everybody has this power inside of them. It's just cutting through the crap and the BS that we tell ourselves about how we operate. If we can get past that, it's yeah. unlimited what you can achieve. And it sounds like because of your history with cancer, that when you are doing this for other people, it's almost bringing extra healing through you and keeping you in a place that transcends the vibration of cancer or illness. And it sounds like because of this experience, you also got to heal those parts of yourself about self-worth or the way that you see yourself through all yes. of I don't, I could not have taken this journey without first being given that gift of cancer. It, woo, it was a gift. And um, I mean, it brought me to where I am today. And I got to experience what, what people are going through. I think that I was just chosen because I was never going to be a cancer patient mm -hmm. ever. <laughs> nope. And I think they needed that to, um, to have that person that could create a safe space and understand what a cancer patient is going through but also understand that if you flip your mind, we can get through it. So if I can just grab a few hands and pull them along and get them out of what they're, they're in, that's my mission. And it sounds like that's exactly what is happening and, and what you're doing. It sounds like that's exactly what you're doing. It sounds like you found what your mission is um, or your mission found you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and is there any kind of exercise or thing that you have clients practice or that you practice daily that you could give as a tool for us or something we could do right now? Anything? Um, what I would tell people to practice daily is listen to your speech. If you say, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I'm going to tell you you're a liar <laughs> because you have to remove that word. You have to get rid of the negative because you have no idea what you can do. I am telling you right now, you are limitless. You can do everything. We just have to figure out what's blocking you and what's in your mind and what's in your way and move it. You know what I really appreciate about you is your clarity and your pinpointing it right away rather than skirting around um, and not getting to the point. People want the thing now. They want to have the tool now. They don't want to skirt around. And I really appreciate your directness. Um, <laughs> I like it. I'm like, yes. Thanks, and I'm dear. hearing it. <laughs> Vulnerability, openness, directness, and it's all to help people. It's like everything, all these components coming together to create. Uh, I can feel everything you're saying, and it sounds amazing listening to you talking about it. Um, and I can see how much it's done for you. And I know that you'll be acquiring even more as you go along. Because, you know, in this journey, something new pops in your, in, your, in your toolbox. And you're like, oh, come along. Oh, new tool. Oh. And then it creates this very curated experience of healing that you can bring to others. So I, I really, really, really like that a lot. Yeah, you um, just have to be curious about everything because it's that's what brings those next steps and the more you're curious about what's in your way the more you can address it yes and respond to those things that you discover and see how you respond with every new client 
there's a nuance that I had not experienced before and I get to experience with them. So not only is it beneficial for them, it's beneficial for me as a practitioner to experience it with all of these clients because I'm learning and learning and learning more so I can give and give and give more. And, and that's, I, I get it. I, same thing for me. I get it. Look at Tommy says, I'm curious about life and more. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's saying hi. Who? We thank you all for listening today. Um, so how can they find you again? What's your Instagram? Do say the website again. This is Virginia Co. Um, and yeah, give us the information and then give us a parting message that you want people to take away or to remember um, from this experience. All right. My Instagram, which is so slow, I'm slowly learning to use it. Um, it is V-A-C-O-E. And then I have a Facebook page for This Coexistence. And then my website is thiscoexistence.com. Amazing. And that has the services for Site K and balancing and all the, all the stuff on all there. All the fun stuff is on there. Yes, I love we'll it. Just keep uh, adding to it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And what's a parting message for everybody today that you want them to take away from this experience? Uh, just remember that there are no impossibilities. That we're in a time right now where where things are scary and um, people are stressed out. And if you stress, you shut off your immune system. So let's not stress. We can't stress. And then just be open to all the possibilities never say i can't because somehow some way you probably can um we just have to figure it out and we can figure it out together i mean there there's endless possibilities i love it i thank you so much for taking your time today to sit with thank us you. and the people that were here and that came and went and all the energy i felt the energy i loved your story thank you for sharing that so much um, and we'll have to hop on again in the future so we can um, have more people hear about what you do. I thank all the listeners for being here, or listeners, I guess you're watching too. All the watchers <laughs> for being here with us. Check out her Instagram and her website. Thank you so much. Thanks, Derek. I right. greatly appreciate you. Thank you, guys. Bye.